Here are seven powerful ways to reprogram your subconscious mind. Now, it's very apparent that ever since I was a kid, I just thought I wasn't good enough. I thought I was stupid. I thought I was dumb. I was always wondering why I was so unhealthy, why I had all these health issues, why I wasn't confident in my own skin. I was always, you know, very hard on myself. And I would always look around at other people and I was like wondering, well, that person has more money than I do. That person has a better body than I do. That person has a better relationship than I do. And how come I am not confident? How come I am struggling? How come I can't get the thing or the life that it is that I wanted? And it became very apparent that I had a lot of negative self-thinking, a lot of negative self-talk. That voice inside of my brain was actually my worst nightmare as well as my biggest enemy. But it was that voice that was constantly talking in the back of my head saying, oh, Mike, you're not good enough. Oh, Mike, you're not smart enough. Or you can't do it because your parents are immigrants and you know Asians are outsiders or all of these stuff. All of these things in my brain, I realized that the thoughts that I had was creating a reality that I did not want. And I realized that if I wanted to go ahead and get something that I wanted to get more confident in my body, to fix my health issues, to go ahead and attract the right partner in my life, to go ahead and make more money, I needed to go ahead and change these thoughts. Because these thoughts were very negative. They were so dark. I always came from a dark space and I was like, okay, if I want something different, I need to go ahead and change the way that I would think. My only problem is no one ever taught me how to actually think. No one ever taught me how to go ahead and, for example, reprogram my subconscious mind. So how was I able to go ahead and do that? And what I wanna do today in this video is share with you like the seven powerful ways that allowed me to actually reprogram my subconscious mind so that you can actually escape any shackles that is currently constraining you from living the life of freedom as well as like just relieving all of the pressure off your shoulders to actually step into your greatness. Now the first one is first identifying where those patterns of negative subconscious thinking came from. Because if you're not aware of how you were initially programmed, it's very hard to reprogram. Does that make sense? Now, for most of us, our biggest programming force is actually our parents. Like the more you understand your relationship with your parents and their relationships with each other and your parents' relationship with money, with finances, with love, with health, you'll start realizing that as you get more aware of the patterns that your mom and dad have, you start realizing that those are the same patterns that you adopted as well. What do I actually mean by that? Well, I can tell you this, you know, it's like I always wanted to reprogram my subconscious mind, but I didn't realize that I was kind of living the same mistakes as my parents over and over and over and over again, when literally it's like the blueprints in front of me on here are the things that they did well, but here are also the things that they did not do well. Here's an example. Let's just talk about finances, right? Because finance is a big thing. I would always look at my parents and they would tell me things like, oh, money is the root of all evil. Oh, you work really, really hard until you die, right? Money doesn't grow on trees. So in their mind, they were already programmed for scarcity. They were already programmed to be, you know, an enemy of money, to kind of repel money. And this is what they were telling me ever since I was a kid. So just imagine if like my earliest memories about money is that money is the root of all evil. Money doesn't grow on trees. You work really, really hard until you die. It's like this programming ever since you were a kid where you just start believing that because that is what you were told. And I couldn't question it as a kid because this is my mom and dad. They know everything. They're perfect human beings. You know, the, the, like, like I look up to them. Look how big they are. I'm just a little kid. I don't know anything. So if they're telling me that money is the root of all evil, if they're telling me that money doesn't grow trees, like they wouldn't be lying to me. So I have to believe it. And then as I got older, I started realizing, oh, why is it so hard for me to attract money? It's because I was programmed from my parents to not like money. Does that make sense? It's the exact same thing with relationships, right? It's like, you know, I, I was always curious on why every single relationship that I had ended in pain. And it was very, very simple. Essentially what happened is I tend in a relationship as it goes longer and longer and longer to become a people pleaser where I would have no boundaries, where I didn't know how to say no. And because of that, because I was afraid of conflict, I would just let people walk all over me, over and over and over again. I would just allow it. I'd be like, oh, I don't wanna cause any conflict. I don't wanna hurt their feelings. I don't wanna be seen as bad, right? And then guess what happens? As that time would go, and I would let people cross my boundaries over and over and over again, it would just build up into this resentment, and then I would just implode and self-destruct and then I would be the reason why that relationship failed. 
I created a self-fulfilling prophecy where the thing that it is that I did not want ended up happening. Oh, okay, well, where did I go ahead and adopt this? Okay, well, who, who, who did I model this from? My mom or my dad, my mom or my dad, my mom or, oh, my dad. My dad had boundaries, but he didn't respect them. He allowed people, not just my mom, but like people around to cross his boundaries. As it started getting worse and worse, it would literally lead him to go ahead and cause some big fight. And then I would just be like, okay, this is exactly how you go ahead and communicate. Okay, you shouldn't respect your boundaries, so you gotta go ahead and adopt it and learn it, right? Or he would go ahead and turn to alcohol, right? And he would just start drinking and drinking and drinking to numb the pain, to numb the anxiousness, to numb the anxiety. So guess what I did? You know, it's like, I didn't respect my boundaries. I didn't know how to say no. And when it led to a bigger point, I just chose alcohol, I just chose drinking, I just chose, you know, numbing myself so that I didn't actually have to go out and feel, right? Oh, and I adopted this from literally my dad, right? So you can see that the programming in you is very, very, very deep. If you have problems with your health, if you have problems with your wealth, if you have problems with your love, even if you have problems with your happiness, who did you model it from? Is it your mom? or is it your dad? The second question that I wanna ask you is why are you actually modeling them? Is it giving them the results that you want? You know, I realized I was like, my, my parents, I love them so much, but I was modeling a lot of their unhealthy habits that were causing them a lot of pain, and I didn't realize it at the time, but I was unconsciously adopting their bad habits. And if you do not at least realize or become aware of the habits that you are adopting from mom and dad with your money, with your health, with your wealth, with your love, with your happiness, it will be very hard to reprogram your subconscious mind. So whenever something bad happens, instead of blaming, just ask yourself, okay, well, who did I model this, mom or dad? Why am I modeling this? Is it worth modeling them, right? What pain has it caused? If I model them for the next five, 10, 20, 30 years, what will my life look like? You need to realize that there is some pain that happens if you go ahead and choose that path. And when that pain is strong enough, it is so much easier to change. Which is why the first reason that you need to do before we go over any of the you know ways to go ahead and reprogram the subconscious mind, become first aware of how you were initially programmed so then you understand what to do when that pattern emerges. Does that make sense? Now the second thing that I ended up doing is I created a quantum realm mastermind. Now what does that actually mean? Okay, so just imagine this, right? In my mind, there is my mom and my dad, right? This is how we are essentially programmed. We're essentially, we need to make a decision and mom is like, oh, you need to do this. Oh, dad says you need to do this. Or there's a decision and then you go ahead and look inside and be like, okay, well, how did my mom react in this situation? How did my dad react in this situation? Right, so for example, conflict with humans is a big one, right? So it's like every single time I would get into a fight with someone I was doing business with, or, you know, for example, someone I was in a relationship with, I would literally just go ahead and yell and scream and, and fight. And then it was causing a lot of pain and self-sabotage in my life. And I was always being the victim. And then when I caught it, I was like, okay, well, in my mind, I have two people, my mom and my dad, who am I adopting this victim mentality from? And then that influences us, right? So what I ended up doing is I realized, okay, well, in my mind, I have this like energetical version of my mom and my dad telling me what to do and I'm modeling what to do when a situation, most of the time conflict happens. So what I needed to realize is I needed to change the seats in this table on my mind of exactly what I need to do when something happens. It's called like a mastermind in your mind, okay? So I was like, mom, dad, I love you, but you can't sit in this room right now. I need to go to fill this up with people that have the results that I wanted. And I remember when I first started doing this at 18, it completely changed my life because I had all these like negative influences. I had all this negativity in my family, right? And I literally replaced it in my mind with, you know, people that I looked up to, people that was good at social skills, people that were good, confident, people that were successful, people that were just generally good people, right? And every now and then when my values and my priorities change and I want to adopt certain characteristics or qualities or confidence that I do not yet essentially have because we guys understand that this man that you see in front of you was literally built in here because like I was shy, I was nervous, I was an introvert, right? I, I was not confident in myself, I was not confident in my body. I was always like nervous and socially awkward. 
I literally had to change my character because the way that I was programmed when, when I was a child was not conducive to the life that it is that I wanted. So I had to find people. And if I couldn't actually you know, invest to go to those places because I didn't have money, I had to go to and first create them in my mind. It's the quantum realm mastermind, right? So who is it now? Like, I can tell you this right now, like even today, you know, it's like, I still go through a lot of insecurities. I'm like, oh, is this video gonna be good? Are people gonna care what I say? What if people think I'm stupid? What if people think I'm done? What if I make another stupid failure? What if, you know, I can't, you know, for example, succeed? What if I can't, you know, provide and protect for my loved ones? What if all my family and friends were right? What if all my friends were actually right and I am a loser and I can't actually do things? What if I'm actually dumb? What if I will never have opportunity? Like I have all these negative thoughts in the back of my mind. And what most people don't understand that my natural state is actually negative, right? My actual state is filled with darkness. So what I do is I put myself in the quantum realm mastermind and I surround myself with people that have the character that it is that I want. So that when a conflict happens, either externally or internally, I have people that I can essentially model. And who is it now? It's literally Jesus on my right, on my left is Muhammad, peace be upon him. And then next to him is Buddha. And next to him is Tony Robbins. And across from him on that table is literally Elon Musk. And then next to Elon Musk between Jesus is literally my mentor that I have in real life. And then across on the other side of the table is my future self, 10 years in the future. So just imagine like how much more powerful that is. Before it was like mom and dad fighting and I would ask them, what do I do? And then I would just have conflict. Compared to now, it's like Jesus, Muhammad, peace be upon him, the Buddha, right? You have Tony Robbins, you have Elon Musk, you have my real life marketing mentor, and then you have, you know, for example, Jesus, and then me, future me. And what I would essentially do is patterns essentially happen because your subconscious mind is being controlled by your old patterns. And what happens is when a conflict happens, instead of you actually being aware of it, you just go back to the programming that you have and you just do the decision based off of what you were taught that was ingrained into you from ages eight to 12. So that's why it's like, if you've been att attracting a lot of, you know, like bad decisions or bad relationships or bad financial decisions, it's because everything that you were programmed with, all the things that you feel like is natural is actually wrong because that's what caused pain in your parents. So what I do now when I have like a very important decision to make or when I have a very important conflict to make is instead of me realizing that I know everything, which I don't, right? I'm not the smartest person in the world. I'm literally like a normal human being, right? Is I put myself in this quantum realm mastermind with all of these people that have characters that I essentially want to envelop and develop within myself. I would just ask them a question. You know, it's like, hey, mastermind, what should I do with XYZ problem? And then instead of me, depending on my parents and what they did in their relationship with money, with health, with fitness, with finance, I would go ahead and just depend on these people that have literally succeeded in so many ways that I could even possibly imagine. And I would just be like so humble and grateful, like, oh, thank you so much for taking or giving me this advice. And I will just go off in my day and just do the advice that they told me, right? And the thing is like, anyone can do this. Like, who do you look up to the most? Who are six people you can look up to the most? Three people here, three people here, and your future self in front of you 10 years in the future. And once you have that conversation, you realize that it's like, you have everything that you need to go ahead and succeed. Like you literally have everything that you could possibly imagine to go ahead and live the life that it is that you want. Now the third step is you want to merge with your future self. So once I'm done, you know, having this conversation with this mastermind realm, my future self is actually very quiet because he knows all of the answers to all the questions that I already have because he has already lived it. He's gone through the pain, he's gone through the suffering, he's gone through the trauma, right? So after a while, it's like, I literally go ahead and imagine like a door, right? And my future self is like literally behind the door I imagine my fingers, my hands, imagine the doorknob, I imagine the door. I literally touch the doorknob, I open it, and I see my future self with all the answers. I literally just give him a hug to the point where we literally start merging. And all of the challenges that I had or the answers that I wanted or the feelings that I want to adopt or the characteristics that I want to have, 
I literally feel myself merging with my 10 year version of myself and just embodying what it feels like to accomplish all my goals, to actually hit the income that it is that I want, to attract the relationships that it is that I want, to get into the body and the, the, the better health that it is that I want, that makes me feel like I have an abundance of energy and vitality. You merge with them. And then what you do is you borrow that feeling for the day. And essentially what happens is when you do that over and over again, and I do this every single morning, and right before bed, you start quantum leaping to the next level. You start quantum jumping to future realities and bringing that into the present even sooner. Instead of just kind of like derping around and just like running into the walls because you can't see, because you don't have any intention of the life that it is that you actually want, right? Now the third step that you need to go ahead and do is you need to go ahead or I think this is a four step. I think this is a four step. One, two, three, four. This is a four step, right? See, I, I make mistakes. I don't always get things perfect. So the four step is identifying the people that trigger you because what angers you will control you. So another way is, again, a lot of the times we lose ourselves in anger. When we go and feel anger, guilt, shame, or fear, we're no longer logically thinking. We are now listening to the old programming from mom and dad, society, or the matrix, right? So whenever I feel, for example, strong emotion like anger, I literally dive deep on journaling why is it that I'm angry. So, you know, several years ago, it's like, I went through a lot of bad things. It's like, financially, I was making a bunch of bad decisions. I was like in a relationship that wasn't good for me. And the thing is, I, was, I wasn't taking any responsibility. I was blaming everybody. So what I essentially did is all of the people that I was angry about, I literally wrote them a letter. I was like, I'm so angry at you because you know you cut me out or you don't care about me or you don't actually go ahead and give me the opportunity to grow or you cut me out of this business deal or you cut me out of your life. And I was just like writing all of these things to them. And now I never sent it to them. But what I did is after writing it, number one, it's very therapeutic. I was like, well, I need to get that off my chest. The second thing is when I went to bed and I looked at it the next day with a fresh pair of eyes, I realized I'm being a freaking victim. Every single time I was yelling on the piece of paper at somebody else, I realized that I didn't actually take any responsibility of myself. And if I stay in that victim state, it's very hard to reprogram my mind. Being a victim, fear, anger, any strong negative emotion, it's impossible to go out and reprogram your subconscious mind because it controls you. But once I realized that all of these things were me pointing at them as the fault, when in reality it's my fault, that's when I realized, oh, actually, here's a pattern. And then I asked myself, okay, well, who did I adopt this from, right? Okay, my mom, I adopted this from my mom, I adopted this from my dad. Oh, this quality I adopted from my dad. Oh, this quality I adopted from my mom. And I just started realizing, okay, Every single time I'm angry or fearful, that's a great time to reprogram my subconscious mind because it's essentially, you know, God saying, this is what is controlling you because it angers you. So fix it. And you can use the tools that it is that I'm giving you right now. Now, the fifth thing is Vipassana meditation. Now, Vipassana meditation, I learned this in Bali. I had this mentor who I was like, there's a lot of bad things happening in my life. I had relationship problems. I didn't understand boundaries. I had business problems. And I went up to him and I was like, hey, what do I need to do? You know, it's like, I'm attracting a lot of bad things in my life. Uh, can you just tell me what I need to do to fix it? And I was expecting like technical advice. I, I was thinking, oh, you know, you just gotta go ahead and start this business and do this accounting. And, and maybe you need to go ahead and just change, you know, the Google spreadsheets. But he didn't give me technical advice. He actually told me that I didn't have any technical problems in life. I had a spiritual problem. And what he told me is he was like, Mike, you just gotta go sit and meditate and observe all of the feelings and emotions and not move for 10 hours a day. And I was like, okay, 10 hours a day, that's a lot. I'll try four. And he told me essentially what you need to do is you need to sit in a cross lotus position, right? And just like observe at first the small triangle space right underneath your nose on every single time you do an inhalation and exhalation. And you just wanna observe the feelings that are right underneath your nostrils. This is literally what you know the Buddha did to essentially achieve enlightenment, right? 
And he'd tell me, he was like, you just do that for hours. I'm like, well, what if I need to move? He's like, don't move. Well, what if my legs get uncomfortable? Don't change your leg position. And he told me, he's like, it's gonna be painful. It's gonna be hard. You're gonna be bored out of your mind. You're gonna feel like you're going insane. But if you actually sit through all of the emotions that you feel, all of the discomfort that you feel, you will achieve a new level of self-control over your thoughts, right? Because the reason why we, we go into our deprogrammed state is because we lose awareness of our thoughts. And the reason why we lose awareness of our thoughts is because we're controlled by them. But if you focus on your breath, you don't actually have time to think. Meaning you could observe your actual thoughts from a distance, right? So I literally did that. I was like, okay, mentor guy, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I literally went, sat, cross-loaded position, sat like this, and just for four hours every single day for seven days in a row, I just sat and literally did nothing. But just doing that, just breathing. And I was observe just the, the feeling right underneath here. And when you do it enough, you could actually move that just observation and sensation wherever you feel stress or like not comfortability. Essentially what would happen in the first 10 minutes is I would be bored out of my mind. So the first thought is like, I'm bored, I wanna go ahead and move. Now that is when you actually fight that urge to move, you sit. After 30 minutes, I was like, oh, my legs are falling asleep, I should move. And then at that moment, you get another urge, oh, maybe I should move, but then you don't because my mentor told me not to. At about an hour, my brain was screaming at myself because it was like, you're crazy, your leg is gonna fall off, you're gonna die. And I was like feeling all of this pressure and it was going, 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 going. I thought I was gonna go insane. I thought my legs were gonna fall off. I thought I was gonna die, even though I was just sitting there. And right when I was just about to give up, I would continue just sitting and observing just my breath as well as any stress that was in my body. And what I realized is that feeling, that negative state, the fear, the, the, the uncomfortability, the feeling of wanting to move and react, it could only go high so far, so fast, but it doesn't go forever. Because if you literally don't move, what happens is that emotion of uncomfortability will be so intense to the point where it's gonna hit a max point and then it drops. And you get into this like new level of relaxation and you realize, why was I actually being controlled by those negative thoughts and emotions to actually want to move? And that would literally happen over and over again. Every 20 to 30 minutes, I would go through those spurts. Like I would hear my negative thoughts wanting to move, wanting to change, wanting to react. I would feel the anger, the uncomfortability, all of the negative emotions come up. But after every single time, every single time, it would reach a point where it would just drop to a new level of relaxation and relaxedness. And I started realizing, wow, this is literally the human condition where it's like something bad happens and you wanna move, you wanna react. And because of that, you react, but then it causes more pain in your life. But when in reality, if you just sit and observe your thoughts and you didn't get controlled by fear or anger or negativity or scarcity, you don't have to relive the same negative programming from your parents. And literally that one thing alone changed my life. You know, it literally made me millions of dollars in a short amount of time. It allowed me to go and attract the relationships that I wanted in my life. It allowed me to become more healthy. It allowed me to even like fix a lot of my health issues that I had at the time, right? It was literally just observing my thoughts. It was literally doing Vipassana meditation or just sit and not do nothing and see and feel where the negativity was like existing in my body, right? Now the sixth thing is breath work. Now this is if you wanna do it in a faster way, right? So it's like obviously most people don't have like two to four to six hours to just sit and do nothing, right? Which is why you should literally get, you know, your finances good, find a way to build an online business, find a way to, you know, get mentored by someone that already has a successful business, find a way to add value to existing businesses so they start making you money so that you actually have the freedom to do these spiritual things and to go ahead and dive deeper in yourself. But if you don't have that much time, the sixth way that you could go ahead and reprogram your subconscious mind is breath work. Now, what is breath work? I first heard about this in Copenhagen, like nearly half a decade ago. And essentially what happened is I was at this Mind Valley event, right? And it was so weird because we were like in this spiritual island in Thailand. There's all these like, like random people from all around the world. There's people from like Israel and Ukraine and Russia and Canada. And it was just me 
and my business partner at the time, and we were gonna go do our health retreat at this wellness event where it's like, here's someone that literally built a hundred million dollar a year business, and now we're gonna go do meditation stuff. And I remember on the curriculum, as we were like on this uh, like resort in Copenhagen, which isn't actually that expensive, I think it was like 50 bucks a night, because Asia is like cheap. And literally on the itinerary is like, oh, wake up at 6 a.m. for breathwork class. I was like, breathwork class? I don't need help breathing. It's a little in, out. Why, why do I need to do breathwork? But I was like, oh, you know what? I just trusted. It was something new. I never tried it before, so I went. And essentially, there was like this Russian girl that was like leading the entire class. And she was like, okay, guys, you need to go ahead and breathe right now, in out in out and they were playing like some shamanic music and i'm like okay i was kind of judging the entire thing and i kind of like accidentally fell asleep <laughs> and while i was like accidentally like asleep i remember there was a girl to my right right it was like my old business partner and then my friend from malaysia on my left and this guy on my left just started going super saiyan and screaming this girl on my right was like going through convulsions screaming exorcism slash orgasm <laughs> And I wake up like late to the party thinking, what the heck is going on? I want some of that. So I was just like, <laughs> and I was like, I try to catch up kind of like, you know, when you go to the bar and all your friends are drunk and you're like, I need to catch up. So you go ahead and just take as much shots, but then you miscalculate and you take too many shots. And now you're like overly drunk, right? So that's literally what happened to me. I was trying to catch up to what she was feeling and what he was feeling. And out of nowhere, I'm like crying. You know, I feel all relaxed. I have all this gratitude in my body. I start seeing visions of all of these people in my life. The reason why is because as I was breathing in and out and out very fast, I started almost like hallucinating. Like I was going through like some crazy psychedelic experience. I don't know if it was like DMT got released or something. But essentially what happened is I went through a vision where I saw all of my loved ones that I cared about die, right? And it was so intense where I literally thought it was real, just from breath work. And I had all this regret that came up while I had this little psychedelic experience with just breathing. Uh, all this regret of, oh wow, you know, it's like I have valued money over people. I spend more time chasing money instead of, you know, helping my family. Or I, I, I focus so much on this money thing where it's like I let the beautiful relationships in my life just deteriorate. I let my health deteriorate. And I remember I was like crying. I was like, oh, and I was like, oh man, I'm gonna die. And then it hit me when I came back from that experience. I was like, oh my God, I'm alive. My parents are alive. My family's alive. Instead of actually waiting until I die to realize this, I could just live this now. I could live as if this was my second chance at life. Now you can do the research because you know I'm not no doctor. I'm not the smartest person in the world. I'm just like a human guinea pig that I like testing all this stuff on. But it's like, that reprogrammed me deeply. <laughs> and all I did was breathe. All I did was, if you want more videos like that, let me know, I'll, I'll create like some breathwork videos. Plus, you know, I have like business partners that literally have like huge breathwork practices all over Bali, right? Now, the seventh thing is controlling your physical realm. So I created my mental realm when I didn't have any money. Once I had money and I invested into networks where I could actually go ahead and, for example, meet the people that it is I want, because proximity has power, I started changing the people in my physical mastermind. How I did that was I would take a one-way trip ticket to Asia and I would just literally bump into that based off of my values and just realigning with people that had similar values as me, right? And literally, if I had a problem in my life, say I was very bad at relationships, cool. My physical relation, my physical realm of mastermind would be everyone that has a relationship that I, is that I want and me and my partner would just spend more time with them because we will program each other. Their subconscious mind will program my subconscious mind just from proximity. Does that make sense? If I wanted to make more money, say I was like stuck at three to five grand a month and I wanted to make 10 grand a month, guess what I would do? I would literally fly to, invest in, or go to or move to the places where the people that have 10 grand a month are making. Because surely I will become like that. Does that make sense? And I did that at every single level. When I was stuck at three grand a month and I wanted to get to five grand a month, I started spending more time with people that were making five grand a month. 
when I was stuck at five grand a month and I wanted to make 10 grand a month, I would start spending more time with people that are making 10 grand a month. If I was stuck at 10 grand a month and I wanted to get to 20 grand a month, I would start spending more time with people that are making 20 grand a month. You need to start changing your physical mastermind. Does that make sense? Because for me, I didn't realize most of my friends were drinking, they were smoking, they were being a victim, they were blaming. A lot of it was my family members being negative to me all the time. They're like, oh yeah, you know, those things don't work, or money doesn't grow on trees, or I tried one of those things when I was younger, and it pulls you down. When if you go ahead and surround yourself around the right people, they pull you up. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> right? And here's the last thing, this is just be a bonus plus one. And that is choosing the right partner. Why is that? Because choosing the wrong partner is, number one, expensive. You could lose half of your net worth just like that if you choose the wrong partner. Number two, you can't get that time back. And number three, you know, the intimate relationship that you have with another human being is some of the most strongest reprogramming forces in, my, in the universe, right? An example, my dad was an alcoholic. He chose my mom. My mom programmed him to no longer be an alcoholic. But it could also go the negative. How many times you chose a relationship or you chose a partner or you chose someone that you thought you were in love with and they started abusing you, they started programming you the wrong way, they didn't respect your boundaries, they didn't empower you to achieve your goals, they didn't support you to go ahead and become the best version of yourself, they pulled you down and you let them, you let them. Or what if you had a partner, you know, that actually encourages you? Maybe you have a wife or a husband that inspires you. Maybe they push you to become better versions of themselves, of yourselves. You could almost run through a brick wall, right? That's why if you choose the right partner, it'll be a blessing. If you choose the wrong partner, it will be a curse. And the most important thing that you need to do is to choose a partner that aligns with your values, that is on the same path, because if you're going here and they want to go here, obviously it's not going to work out long-term wise. I can't tell you how many times I chose a partner just because they looked good, but then they were going here, I was going here, and obviously conflict was happening. And if I didn't know how to deal with conflict because I'm still programmed from mom and dad on how they dealt with conflict, oh, we yell at people when we love them, then obviously it's going to get worse and worse and worse. And it's going to go from loving to traumatic very, very fast. It's going to go from love to trauma very, very fast. As opposed to, if I just knew what my values were, if I knew what I wanted in a partner, what values and characteristics I want them to have, and how can I actually attract them in my life? And if you know one person that is struggling with any of the things that I talked about today, share this with them.